Hey. <laughs> Yo. What's up, guys? How about we try this again? Right? Can you guys, let me get a mic check real quick, though. Let me know how it's coming through. Let me get that shit started. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, um... So... <laughs> about last time... So I am a... Let's just, let's just say I'm a Twitch scrub and... I forgot to manually check... Um, archive past broadcasts. So that three hour stream that I did on Monday got blown up. Meaning it doesn't exist on the internets anymore, so... <laughs> um, I felt it would be a good opportunity to kind of run it back for those who missed. Um, make sure the content gets archived this time and automatically uploaded to YouTube. And finally, actually make the stream a little shorter while at the same time going a little bit more in-depth in specific concepts. Um, so you get, get to disseminate more information, a little bit more technique specific examples um so uh people out there can kind of watch it um and kind of focus on each individual section so i decided to take the content that we did on monday and break it up into three separate broadcasts and um so i mean it was a lot there was like 10 different things we covered so today we're going to do part one um, which is gonna cover this is I'm just gonna cover the cheap shit so <laughs> all of the cheap stuff that you know has the cheapest of the cheap um, which will be uh, jump D FDC and we'll talk about uh, confirming jump D hits again and then we'll go into the command grab YRC OS um, applications uses specifics against characters um, how to <laughs> how to not tech <laughs> and then we'll go into um to close it out meter applications so this is going to cover um her yrc rc um really good options that you know a little bit advanced and also we're going to talk about um overdrive uses so extending combos with overdrive finishing combos for the kill with overdrive um advanced overdrive techniques um and pretty much it for the first day. And then uh, this weekend, um, well, starting tomorrow, a lot of people are going to be heading down to Orlando for CEO Taku. I'll be there Friday through Monday. So I'm thinking I'll give myself a day off next Tuesday. And then next Wednesday, we'll come back with part two. And we'll cover a little bit more um, specific things to gameplay and damage. So part two will be max damage routes, advanced knockdown applications, instant kill routes, and then we'll talk about burst save combos and burst DA baits and punishes. And then take a short break and then come back. Part three we'll, we'll wrap it up and talk about character specific stuff and matchups and that'll be great. It'll be a great Q&A session with the stream chat and um, people on Twitter. Um, and we'll try to go through as many matchups as possible. We'll just dedicate that whole stream to matchups. And uh, I think that's going to be really fun and enlightening. And perhaps, you know, hopefully I'll learn some stuff myself. All right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, let's just, let's just get started. Oh, what's up, Malik? What's up? Uh, first of all, thanks everybody who tuned in again. And those who missed it the first time. So, um... You know, do me do me a solid, guys, and just tweet it out that I'm back online, I'm live, and tell the people to check it out. Or if they can't check it out, um, let them know that you know we'll we'll have an archive for them so they can watch it um, the next time they log in or get a chance to sit down and just watch some Eno Tech, right? Yeah, but I'm really I'm really happy to be able to do this, and it's fun. It was mad fun last time. So we're just gonna get in, dude. 
and we're gonna talk about Jump D. Well, first, we're gonna change this suck ass song and this character. Get the fuck out of here. Alright, we're going. Let's keep it. Let's keep it Villa Vampire. And yeah, I'm gonna go Diva. Diva's cool. Who should be the punch? Let's, let's put Sin as the punching bag, yo. Ill, ill. Why is this color so ass? That's a pretty cool color, though. Yeah. Keep it brown, dog. People of color. Yo, <laughs> Yes. Yes. Alright, so we're just gonna start. Let's get into this jump D. Faultless defense cancel. Um, so, uh, this is a technique that Eno had throughout the XX series. And what it does is allow her to cancel the momentum of her jump D button. Um, this button here. Alright. By itself, it already changes her air momentum. It kind of stops wherever she was. Well, it doesn't stop, but it kind of... Uh, let's say slows whatever she was doing whatever momentum in a like a horizontal direction she was going definitely in a vertical um, so if I'm jumping she just stops see I'm jumping and as soon as I press the D button that upward momentum stops even if I'm super jumping everything the upward momentum just stops and just falls um, same thing with jump it looks like she actually does another jump but you know it's just part of the button She's always going to gain a little bit of height when you hit jump D. So falling, you can see that, right? Um, and then out of dash, she's going to do a little stationary hop. Help you to stay like where you were. And uh, really tricky when it comes to, you know, things like empty jump low or empty jump throw. And um, last minute jump D's really close to the ground. Alright. And even out of air dash. So she'll keep the forward momentum of the air dash. If you cancel it fast enough out of um, her air dash, you will actually just drop. And you won't get this little hop. Um, and that's, that's notable because there are some techniques um, where you can use that to your advantage. One, it uh, really helps with the jump D landing recovery. And two, um, you can use it out of uh, IA, like hover IAD. So... There you go. Like you can do hover IAD button into uh, fast fall jump D, and um, that kind of takes away the risk of using jump D. You still get a ridiculous. You still get a really good confirm. As I think jump D only prorates like eighty percent, so you still get a really good combo from a jump D without um, kind of exposing yourself to the risk. But the main thing we're going to talk about is Jump D FTC. And that is um, using a quick, probably three to four frame cancel from your Jump D button into Faultless Defense. And um, what we're going to do is kind of just burst out the way. And I'll explain that later why we did that. And we'll, I'll show you. Um, so what you're going to try to do, any button, it doesn't really matter. Um, you want to use whatever button you whatever buttons to FD that you're comfortable with. Um, so personally I use punch and kick, but you can also use like kick slash, you could use um, you know, punch slash, whatever you want. Um, as long as you FD immediately out of the jump D button. So um, FD is back in any two attack buttons other than dust. And then you're just gonna, you know, hop real quick. And not only do you stop your upwards and any kind of momentum you were doing from the jump D, but you also stop whatever momentum your jump D was going to do. So it's like a double cancel in essence. And um, what this allows you to do is to um, extend overhead options to hover that, like just basically instant overhead them like immediately off the ground. It's crazy. Um, and the beauty of it is that you can use it in lots of applications. You can you know, overhead them, you can do really quick whiff and go low. 
It's really tricky. Or you can whiff and just throw them. Okay. And uh, where it really shines is um, that you get to actually jump cancel this technique out of any button that's jump cancelable on the ground or in the air. And in the air is obviously contingent on the fact that you didn't use up all the air options you had. So on the ground, yes, you can jump cancel out of any button that's jump cancelable. Um, even out of dust, your hover dust. So dust follow up, you can, you know, just, you know, tap up for tap up for the follow up. Well, really? Whatever, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so anything that's jump cancelable, you can jump the FTC out of. And again, it's just really quickly, you can see the inputs on the left, and just hitting dust, and then cancelling immediately into any kind of FD. Um, and the same thing goes for the air, so buttons that are jump cancelable in the air, like jump slash and jump D, um, you can cancel out. Fall, do another overhead, fall and go low. You know? And then you can, you know, layer it on top of each other, so... Um, where you would layer it is usually in neutral applications, so... You know, using it to kind of approach safely, to kind of throw off your opponent's... Um, your opponent's anti-air timing. So, it, even things like IADs on people that might be considered really bad suddenly become, you know, a little bit tricky for them to deal with. And you can do this as long as you have meter. So you can be in the air as long as you have meter. Okay. I think in reload, if you did this rapidly, you actually keep rising and she would be able to just like leave the screen. But now, you know, you kind of just stay in place. You don't gain any extra height from doing it. And then it's just practice from, you know, how fast you plink your um, jump D into FD. Okay. So be mindful that you have to have another air option if you are trying to jump D FDC off of a jump cancelable normal. And what that means is like something like jump slash or jump D which is jump cancelable. So say I dash, you know, and I hit jump slash, or I jump, and I hit jump slash, I can jump cancel again. And that lets me jump D FTC. And once I do the jump cancel, I can FTC as many times as I want um, afterwards. So I can, you know, do it once, I can do it many times. Um, but unfortunately, you cannot jump D FTC cancel, even though jump K links into jump, hev into jump D, Jump P links to the jump heavy, jump heavy, I mean, excuse me, jump heavy links to the jump D. Um, you cannot cancel that button into a jump D FTC. You would just get a jump D. See? You have to use the lies to jump cancel. Right? So, for instance, you know, you have to use that. If you're going to jump in with a jump P or a jump K, you're gonna have to cancel into um, you're gonna have to gatling into a jump slash or something which is you know gonna be most likely and then use it utilize your jump the FDC right and still that's really really good you know you notice this if you could you react somebody blocked your, your jump in you do it you throw off their timing because they think you're gonna go low you're gonna land you know they might think that you're just gonna jump D them to extend your overheads options um, but you can do really crazy stuff like you know just do it once, do it twice. End up on the other side of them. Alright? And um, speaking of the other side of them, <laughs> what we wanna um, what I wanna show you is um, you can actually cross them up on command when you're um, within a close range from them. So for example, standing at this range you can cross them up. And to do this, you want to um, utilize super jump. So this is regular jump. You're not going to get enough height from regular jump to cross them up. All right. You want to utilize super jump. Now you can delay your um, plink from your jump and get a little extra height. And utilize with regular jump, but you notice how Eno's not turning around. So jump K does cross up, but jump slash um, does not. 
And if you're using regular jump, you try to cross up jump slash, you're not going to hit them. So you want to utilize uh, the super jump, which turns her around immediately and lets you utilize the jump slash. Now, um, coming out of the jump the FDC, I love to use um, jump slash in these raw situations um, because it doesn't prorate. Uh, jump K prorates uh, 90%, I believe. And, you know, whatever you do after jump K is going to, you know, force prorate the rest of your combo. But uh, jump slash does not do that. You're going to get ridiculous damage. Um, you know, you want that damage. And take every opportunity. This is already ridiculously hard to block. So why not utilize the, you know, the move that's going to give you and net you the most damage. So be wary of that. So this is utilizing super jump and crossing up. Alright. And that's basically um, jump D, FDC. And the reason I took away burst um, is because... This technique is not possible when you have burst stocked, um, given how it, given how I was showing you just now. All right. Uh, previously in XX series and in Exert 1.0, it was possible as long as you had really good timing and um, you were sure to um, have clean inputs. You would not burst accidentally by utilizing the jump D plink FD you know technique. Um, but in Exert 1.1, uh, fortunately. Well, unfortunately for this technique, but fortunately for, you know, people who felt like the input buffer was a little weird. Um, it was extended by a couple of frames, but um, however, that meant that your jump D input was also extended. And if you overlap that with any kind of other button, you would burst immediately, right? So utilizing, see my inputs, I'm trying to do it the same way as if I didn't have burst. Um, I'm going to burst every time. So thinking about that, um, uh, you know, some, I, f I forget who it was, I think it was Viru um, out of France, it think, I think it was Viru, who, you know, said, uh, guys, why don't you just use a whole technique and um, hide your inputs and then use um, the jump D and plink it to FD. Since you're already holding the button, you're not really, you know, you can't burst since you're not pressing another button anyway. You're just pressing jump D and back. So that's what um, we did. And... This lets you um, utilize the jump D FDC technique even if you do have burst. So what I do is I like to use either uh, punch kick or kick slash depending on what I was attacking with. Um, usually if I'm in the raw or I'm in a raw situation on off the word knockdown or something, I'll hold PK and I'll use it. Um, but if I'm hiding inputs from attacks and, and I'm doing like a chain I'm gonna want to use um, kick slash right and kind of using this is kind of like you know people who play Eddie um, may who hold buttons and do things at the same time uh, and what that lets you do is um, attack and hide your inputs at the same time so you keep your momentum you keep your offense um, and lets you utilize the jump D FDC technique so I'm going to show you uh, an example. So say I'm attacking and I do like a low 2K. And usually like I say a 2K, whatever. 2K standing sh standing strong. Or, well, standing strong. <laughs> standing slash, 5 slash. And that's a normal Gatling, right? So what I want to do is do 2K, hold K, do 5K, I mean 5 slash, hold slash. And then utilize um, the input of jump D, and I'm gonna plink jump D into four or backwards. And what that does is, um, since I'm already holding these two buttons, if I press back, I'm just gonna get FD, right? Even in the air, I'm just gonna get FD. And I'm canceling jump D into FD, and that lets me do the false defense cancel. So, yeah. What I do want to mention is doing it this way is a lot tighter. I'm still not 100% with it. Um, even though I do go for it a lot in uh, tournament play, um, it's just something that needs to be, uh, you know, fine-tuned a little bit more. But uh, usually a, an opponent who's a little familiar with Eno will know or they'll think, 
oh, he has burst, he can't jump the FDC me, but um, at the same time, you know, if you have this on deck, you have this technique, then their guard is always going to be up. And then it just makes you so much more unpredictable on offense if you're utilizing it at all times and mixing it up with her other options. All right. So basically, those are the those are the two ways of doing it. I really, I'm kind of sad that it's just so much more tighter to to do when you do have burst. But um, I'm gonna keep practicing it, and it's it's definitely gonna be worth it. Not only in my game, but um, hopefully everybody else uses it as well. Um, and this is something that I mean, I've shared this tech with uh, Japanese players. Um, I haven't seen too many use it. Um, I've seen Asuka use it a couple times, but even, um, you know, I've talked to Uzen, Koichi, Hasegawa. Hasegawa doesn't like to use Jump D FDC at all. He just straight up told me, like, I just don't like it. And I was like, what is your problem? But, you know, that's on him, so just letting you guys know. Um, so I think, like, what I want to do is uh, show you guys a little bit of applications on how you can use... Uh, this technique in your offense. So I already showed you things you can do like um, Oops, let me let me get that burst out of the way like jump canceling going low um, Jump canceling and going high and If you're gonna jump cancel and use like a jump slash or something You might want to give yourself a little bit more height by delaying your jump D input Just so you're like if you're too low Your jump slash is not gonna come out if you're doing jump K, if you're in your that low, jump K, jump K will come out like that low. It doesn't matter. Jump slash will not. So you got to give yourself a little, a little leeway um, if you're going to use jump slash. You know, it's still crazy fast. So don't feel like you're kind of nerfing your your own mix up anymore. All right. So you know, like Eno has, you know, she has her hover dash, but you know, you have. You have like nine frames where you can't do anything <laughs> um, from the from the moment you input six six, and um, you know, being that her jump P and her jump K are five frames makes like the lowest point of a hover dash button like fourteen frame overhead. All right, um, and utilizing this is even faster. Um, you know, so she has a three frame jump startup. Um, the time it takes to you know, f cancel this. I don't know. I don't really don't know how many frames the cancel is. Um, but her jump K does st start up in in five frames. So I mean, you already have some, already at like three frames jumping. Five frames of the attack is eight, and then maybe add another three frames for the cancel. I'm being generous, um, and that's what eleven frames. So if my math doesn't suck, but um, it's really really fast. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have empty jump low, we have go low, we have overhead them, and then we have other things like using uh, this technique in block strings. So let's set them to everything, huh? Let's make them block everything. It's not going to block low, but that's okay. And say we do a regular block string, we do like a, like whatever. 5p, five 5 five slash, 5, um, five heavy. Usually out of 5 heavy, once you do that, you see that it didn't hit, there's a couple options. So there's, um, there's Chemical Love, which doesn't let you utilize Y or C since they're still in block stun. There's Stroke the Big Tree, and then you have options off of that. You know, you can, you can utilize the heavy version and Y or C. You can delay. And use the slash version. Um, you can TK note. You can do ground note. You can dash away, create more space. You can jump. You can dash cancel again into something, but it's, that's really bad. It's so slow. It's, it's sad. Um, but there's also um, a way to extend your offense. Um, it's not foolproof. You can be uh, a bar raid out of it, um, but it includes utilizing jump the FDC off of. A block jump cancelable normal, so you can continue the pressure, and you would basically jump the FDC and um, air dash right into them again. So 
if you like continue the pressure like that and you have to give yourself a little height so your um, air dash actually activates if you're too if you're just too low then you're not gonna air dash all right so you can do stuff like that or you can you know fake them out and retreat but we have lots of options okay um and then there's uh, other things like utilizing it straight out of uh, fast fall vertical chemical love. So, especially in the corner, which is really good. And then this is so plus is um, the you know forms we're trying to figure out what's the medius you know plus frames that you can get, and we found that it, depending on your height when you mediate, you know it could be anywhere from like plus 13 to like plus 19. It's like really good. Um, and then adding that layer of the jump D FDC, you can even do like jump D FDC cancel jump D, and that's just come on, who's blocking that? You're guessing. Um, and even use like a jump cancel normal after the fast fall VCL, and just to add another layer to your layer to your mixer. Okay. Like do whatever you want. So I yeah I am doing five heavy. I'm doing nine. Uh, well you don't have to do nine, but um, it helps um, split your dash. So I'm doing nine FDC six. So nine four FD six. Okay. And uh, what else? So I'll show you guys. Uh, oh, yeah, like things like off of a ground knockdown, you make them block a note, you get to, you know, do that in their face, you cross them up, um, you can just fake them out, land throw them after they come out of the block stun, you get to layer it like multiple times, they're not, they're just guessing, okay, they're not reacting, <laughs> straight up, uh, Usually when people fight against Eno, default is block high because there's going to be less hurt if you do get hit. So a lot of people, if I start, if you start layering overheads upon them, um, they're just going to default block high. Especially because you know, the fear of getting hit by Jump D is way less than the fear of getting hit low. Um, so utilize um, Jump D FDC and... Um, You know, keep them guessing. You think a jump D is coming? If you want to do jump D, you can, you know, FTC jump D. Okay? You're not going to be able to, nobody's going to give you time to do three, but two is um, definitely possible. You know, especially if you teach them and you're conditioning somebody. Okay? Um, and then there's other applications like using the cross up. So this is, you know, one cross up. Okay. I'm actually trying to um super jump jump install. <laughs> And give myself another um, double jump. Which, can you even do that in Xrd? I never use jump and stall combos with Eno anymore. You know, now that we don't have um, FRC. Um, but it's okay. And being that he's blocking, I'll show you um, some other super advanced stuff. Like um, using VCL and VCL YRC to make it even more stupid. So um, the moment you cross them up, you can always hit and confirm in a really good combo. And let me take them off block for a second. So usually I'll just confirm straight into 6P. There's no need to um, extend it. You already are hitting them um, prorated and um, you're getting pushed back. And you want to take advantage of as much damage as possible. All right. And you know, you can also go low. You can also just throw them. Yeah, you got those options, all right? 
but also you can VCL like straight out of it. And you, look at that shit, right? <laughs> Y'all, ugh. So you can wait until you cross them up. You cross the threshold. Oh damn, I wanted to show that later. And um, VCL on the other side. Uh, you can VCL before you cross them up. Yeah, I'll take that off. Jesus. Um, yeah, so you can mix it up between crossing them up, not crossing them up, staying on the same side. And then you can also do it, so you give yourself a little bit more height, and you can basically be on one side of them, but you land on the other. So, no. I think it's easier if he actually gets hit. Well, I'll show you if he gets hit. So, let's take off block. And I'll just let him get hit. And utilizing something like YRC. want to uncross them up. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> so you can do stuff like that and it's basically an uncross up but it's really dirty. And then you can confirm off of it like that. And use <coughs> excuse me that confirm um what else can you do you can actually air dash and that's really good when they actually block it and if they actually block or get hit and you air dash after you're confirming on hit or block um so they block you still do it um you know air dash pressure they get hit you get to do a combo so you just gotta determine what side you're gonna actually be on. And once you do, there you go. You can do whatever you want. You know, whatever mix up comes after, it's like, oh, you blocked my mix up, so here's another one, okay? And if he gets hit, it doesn't matter. get to confirm it's a combo, okay? Ah. <coughs> All right. And then what what I wanted to show you guys later, but I showed by accident, is um, you could do things like uh, instant jump D F D C cross up super, <laughs> and you, doing that is actually not hard. So what you want to do is you want to do the jump D F D C, but on your F D you want to complete a two one four motion. So the the super is um, actually two three six half circle back and slash. It's two, three, six, you know, half circle backslash, and you get air super. Um, but since you're crossing them up, you can kind of um, do a two and four, and once you cross that threshold, the input buffer will keep it as a, you know, it'll keep the directions you did, which now becomes your two, three, six, since you're actually facing this direction. And then you just complete the half circle back motion, which is actually the half circle forward from where you initially started. So it's easy, you just do two and four, half circle, back, slash.
and you know, keep in mind that um, Air Super starts up is seven frames start up, and then after the flash is zero. So if they are not blocking already, you know, already the mix up is like if you're not blocking, you're getting mixed up. But now, if you're not blocking yet, <laughs> you're getting supered in the face, and you're gonna take massive amounts of damage. Then you get a full air dash confirm, and depending on the character, you'll have to you know decide what confirm you're gonna do. No. Look at that damage. That's, that's two, almost 250. That's that's insaneness. All right. So yeah, practice that stuff. Uh, practice this. Practice this situations. Practice uncrossing up with it. Um, practice the instant uh, super on the other side. It's godlike. All right. And um. <coughs> Um, I'm, I want to say that we pretty much covered everything for the Jump D FTC. I, you know, I just want to take the time to, you know, mentally make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, I mean, this is really good, especially if you have a second round and you don't have burst. Um, some characters, like, <clears throat> say for example, Elf felt like to start with like a two slash. Um, and they, what this lets you do is just hop right over it. And if you give yourself enough height, you can actually use the, her jump heavy. And that will hit Elfelt in the, you know, front of her face while she's lying on the, getting up from the ground, so. Or you can just dive and, you know, with whatever, with whatever, um, jump over whatever button you're throwing out. And then come down on top of them. Really good for round start. And since you're FDing, another thing you should notice, like, this, um, auto, if you're holding back, most of the time, if they... Um, dead angle or they burst while you're doing this you're holding back um, and I like to hold back through my next button input So I'm holding back the entire time So if they do decide to burst more likely than not like 70% of the time if they did that dead angle or burst I'm gonna block it and They're gonna be sad <laughs> They're getting punished All right, so uh, not only does is it oppressive on offense, but it's also oppressive in that sometimes it just negates their um just negates their <clears throat> reversals or defensive attempts. Um, so things like DPs, like if, if I did it to Sin, he's mashing DP, or did it to Soul, he's mashing 5k or DP, um, I'm blocking. <laughs> and they're, you know, doing whatever stupidness they thought was going to be smart. Alright? So, yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, if you guys have any questions or you want to um, ask me before we start getting into the next section, then you know hit me up let me know real quick um but if not then i'm just gonna you know get ready to move to the next section which is confirming uh her jump d <laughs> all right and let's mix it up a little bit huh Yeah, I'll show you guys one more time. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'll show you the um, jump T FTC into IAD. <clears throat> yeah, no problem, guys. This is mad fun. I actually love doing it. Yeah, so... Um... What was the first one? So I'll show the, f the 5 heavy IAD again with the FTC. So... It helps um, if you super jump. You want to get as high as possible, okay? And super jump gives you a little extra height when you do the, the FTC. So the input is, you know, it's five heavy, then uh, you could do a jump or super jump um, with nine, and then you do the FTC into another six. Okay? Just a, a, like your normal dash split. And 
like Troy Sauce was saying, um, you can do hover dash into double jump to cross out too. And depending on where you do it, you can land and actually combo. Um, Slay is one of those characters where it's kind of hard to link the cross up um, jump, jump slash six heavy on him unless you're really, really deep. Um, so you might just want to, you know, do a ground based confirm instead. I mean, you lose out on the damage, but you still, it's still really like oppressive. You're just pretty much just exposing somebody's defense and they can't stop you. Okay. And let's, you know, you can do the same thing with the super. You just do the 2 1 4 motion when you're doing the jump DFDC. Yeah, that's dumb, right? Yay! <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> um, considered making an Evernote for Eno. I did. <laughs> I did make one. Um, I will link it. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna try and link it into my um, Twitter account, or put it on my my um, YouTube page or Twitch page. But it covers um, Eno's 1.0 matchups, and um, if somebody knows if they can link it in the chat, that'd be cool. Um, but uh, you know, I'll put it back up. I don't think I have the... I mean, actually, I do have the thing. I do have it saved. Hold on. Where is it? Evernote, Evernote. Oh, there it goes. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Zidane so did approve of my Evernote. Thank you very much. Alright, so now we're, let's get back to um, what we're going to do. So we're confirming her Jump D. And um, Jump D is a move um, that you have to... It's really strong, first of all. It does freaking like 40 damage. Um, Slayer, you know, has good modifiers, so it doesn't show. But it does like 40-something damage. Um... Confirms into ridiculously strong combos. You get the VLC loop. Um, you actually get more than that. Yeah, I get something dumb like that. It's Half Life. Um, and the only downside to it is that it has like eight frames of landing recovery. And um, the good thing about Jump D FDC is like when you do that, you don't accumulate those eight frames of landing recovery at all. Okay, that used to actually be the case in the XX series. Even though you use this, you still had the landing recovery, so you would have to do something like cancel into a slash dive, which didn't knock down it. Um, kind of floated them, but it gave you enough time to recover and then link with a 5K, and then you would do um, HCL six FRC six and get a really good combo non-prorated at that so but um you know outside of jump d fdc you will have eight frames landing recovery which is really bad if you confirm into something like a vcl they block it and then you're basically in get punished territory depending on how high you were so um <clears throat> the lower you are the better it is for you all right you might ha get into a grab war whoever's gonna grab first um you know, hopefully in Revelator, this will kind of cancel itself out if um, both players are mashing grab. Um, but for now.